Hey, I'm Colby Peters. I'm an artist and I've worked in lots of different media. One thing I have always avoided is watercolor because I feel like the paint, the pigment um, could really go anywhere and I wouldn't really have a lot of control over that. Um, and that was a little bit intimidating to me. But I wanted to learn something new and I have this great set of watercolors, so I decided to give it a shot. An artist from Japan, Aya Suzuki, does the most delightful mini animal watercolor paintings with colored pencil embellishments. They look so simple, I thought I'd try to copy them. This is a video of a koala that she painted. Turns out, Ms. Suzuki makes it look really easy because she's incredibly talented. And I found this out pretty quickly when I started trying to copy her animals. So here's what happened. I can tell right away I'm missing something because the edges of my painting don't have that same furry look as the original. Plus, the color is way off, so I experiment a bit with different ratios of pigment to water. This is where I realize that Miss Suzuki must be doing a wet-on-wet -wet technique, which is where you wet the paper a bit first and then paint onto it with color, and it gives you more of that furry, fuzzy, or feathery look. Second try. I paint some water very carefully onto the exact area where I think the koala head should go. I'm not using enough pigment, but I can still tell the color is not quite right. Plus, with all my careful allocation of water, the pigment doesn't have enough room to get furry around the edges. I try adding more pigment and it quickly becomes clear that I'm just moving spots of color around. Time to go back and look at the original again. It occurs to me that maybe the best thing to do would be to cover the entire thing with water, liberally, so that the paint has plenty of room to move around. Also, I need to give up on that color I was using and try something different. It's just too dark. I've got my whole paper covered in water, so I'm ready to go. I'm immediately displeased with my color choice. Way too brown. And the edges are still not doing the furry thing as much as I would like, but it's better. And the color has a nicer, more even application. I re-wet the bottom of the paper before I do the body. I add a bit more water for the arms. It dries pretty quickly. Oh my lord, what a mess. It's looking a little like a ghost koala in the arms. Oh dear. You know, let's just smush that down and try again. Okay, fourth try. I cover my paper in water. This time, I mix a bit of white into the gray I was using at first to change the value a bit, which is the lightness or darkness of a color. The color application is not great as far as evenness, but I managed to kind of even it out with my brush. The nice thing about watercolors is that if you make a mistake and you put color someplace where you don't want it, a lot of times if you work really quickly, you can blot it up with a paper towel. It is looking a little bit fuzzier, so that's good. And I add a little more water for the arms and those are looking quite fuzzy, so I'm pretty happy with those.
I add a little more water for the ears. The shape is definitely not quite right. It looks a little more like a cat than a koala, but I'm pretty happy with the color and the application. This is looking more like a koala, aside from the gonzo nose, which is bugging me a little. Fifth try. I'm being more liberal with my water application to encourage the fuzziness around the edges. I'm also adding, I added more white to the gray to make the color a little bit lighter. This is already looking better. I like the fuzziness. The pigment is not as smooth as in um, Ms. Suzuki's, but it looks fuzzy, so I'm happy about that. One of the cool tricks about watercolor is that if you put too much water or pigment on there, you can dry your brush a bit with a paper towel and then use it kind of like a sponge and it can suck up the extra water. I'm still not crazy about that arm, so I'm just going to do that again. This arm looks pretty good. Not sure why, but I felt the need to do cat ears again. And things got a little out of control with the nose. So I'm just going to use my brush to suck up some of that extra water. So ended up with another gonzo nose, which I'm not crazy about. I thought now would be a good time to watch the nose part of the video one more time and see if that helped. Let's try again. I got my water. It's not quite enough pigment, but I'm pretty happy with the, the distribution and the fuzziness around the edges. Probably a little bit too much paint on that arm, but I think I'm going to just let that go for now. But I did try to equalize the fuzziness of both arms by sucking up a little bit of the color. This time I'm determined to make round ears, but again, for some reason, I'm making cat ears. I think the nose looks better though. All right, this is the last time. I'm really happy with the fuzziness and the color distribution. Maybe not quite enough pigment on the bottom, but that's okay. Arms look pretty good. All right, let's see what happens with the ears. Ah, 
There we go. Those are some koala ears. Okay, now the nose. And you know what? I think we're going to call that done.